Welcome everybody to another video of Vinyl Attic. This is Chili and I'm going to weigh in finally on the 72 Seasons Metallica album. Now before I get into this, please don't forget to hit the like button, comment on this video, share this video, and if you still haven't, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for updates. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, yes, it's been some time now since that album has been released and, you know, uh, a lot of people have you know, said their piece about it and everything. And um, I myself has, you know, um, in recent time, just kind of distanced myself from that band. But um, I was asked to, you know, my opinion on it and everything. And I and I did sit and listen to it and I, and I listened to it with an open mind. And um, I didn't like the lead in song, uh, um, Lux Eterna. And, you know, they just kept on, bombarding the internet with other singles and other songs every once in a while and I, and I didn't really pay no attention to it I figured okay I'll listen to it as uh, beginning to end um, you know conceptually for this album and whatnot and so um, I'll just start with like some positive things about it okay so I did like the fact that Robert Trujillo is um, audible and you could hear him on this uh, album sometimes they throw him a bone you know, um, they, as they did in Death Magnetic, you could hear some songs on uh, where, you know, Robert is actually doing something and, and, you know, it's really cool. And what he does on here is really nice. Um, now, the album itself is 77 minutes long and I, I felt like it's too long. And I know that other people have mentioned this and that was one thing going through this, um, you know, they need to trim the fat on, on some of the songs here. Now, some of them um, are, well, the most, for the most part, they're like six minutes or five minutes, but there are some ones that are seven, eight minutes long. And the first song, um, you know, 72 Seasons, I thought that was a great opener. Um, it did have, um, you know, some elements of, of you know they, they seem to just be always kind of like touching on certain parts of their career you know and just kind of like redoing it and recycling it and putting in it into their new project right now um you must burn is somewhat like a sad but true kind of revisiting that kind of vibe and you know there's some things that they did that sounded like the song cure uh from load you know um which were cool songs and everything, but please let's um, try to do something more original. And um, the one thing that really I felt like what made the album so tiring was the drums. It was very uninspiring, unimaginable. You know, usually Lars, even up in like the Load album, talking about the Load album, you know, he would. Um, you know, change it up a bit, you know, like there's some interesting riffs on here, but you can make an, you know, a somewhat okay riff, really a great riff when you, when the drummer uh, uh, does something, you know, to, you know, kind of just move that section along, like what he did in uh, Hero for the Day, back in the Load album, you know, he, uh, on the really heavy, faster parts, he would, you know, do something different, on the drums and and it's all about dynamics you know and and here is just he's just he's just back there just playing it seems like he's just playing the same beat throughout the whole thing and it's just it's maybe once in a while he'll throw something uh and do something a little different but it's not enough to save the album it's just so boring um i think his best arrangements would probably be lux or turner uh, 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 yeah that song um, and it was short you know if they made a whole album like that length of those songs that would have been great you know um, yeah there was just too much of the old um, justice for all kind of um, you know verse pre-chorus chorus verse 2 pre-chorus chorus that whole thing and uh, it gets it gets it does get boring after a while i mean uh, I, 
I couldn't just listen to the whole thing. And, and it, it, they, they all start to sound the same. So um, it all starts to sound the same, and it's just pretty much boring. You know, I just, uh, it puts me to sleep pretty much. You know, I'm hearing people saying that, oh, you need to listen to it a couple of times and then it'll start to grow on you. If something doesn't grab me from the first listen to make me want to put it on again, then that's, that's how I feel about it. It's just like by the time you get to the end of this album, you're like, oh, no, let's just put it away and maybe try to tackle it another day to, to listen to this whole thing. Um, <clears throat> because, uh, yeah, there were been some moments that were kind of interesting but like I said the drums kind of just kind of killed it and uh, the guitar solos weren't that amazing they're just you know um, him Kirk doing the same old wah pentatonic scale type of thing and he even said he just kind of just did a lot of parts and just gave it to Lars and hey you guys put it wherever you are when you're wherever you're gonna put it at and um, you know like a like a hired gun, you know, he's not really uh, like a member of the band or something, but, you know, Jason Newsted even mentioned in an interview recently, not only that he felt like, which I, which I agree with, is that Enter Salmon is a corny song. However, he also said that um, James and Lars is a, they're, they're a duo. Metallica is a duo. It's mainly those two, you know, and, um, just to get anything creative, creative input, it, any, you know, uh, it is like pulling teeth, I guess, you know, but yeah, they, they threw a couple of bones to um, Robert Trujillo, which was cool. So yeah, it, it's more the same thing. And, you know, it's, um, uh, I myself was just, you know, yeah, it was a struggle just to get through it all. And, and then, and then the whole thing about um, as they are, you know, where Metallica is, you know, I mean, they did struck a chord with the whole, um, you know, the younger generations with Stranger Things. And I think they're still trying to like kind of stay on that level with the concept of, you know, making music about teenage angst or, you know, 18 year old um, 72 seasons and stuff like that and I don't know it's just like 60 65 year old guys singing about 18 year old um, experiences I mean just leave it up for the newer <laughs> bands who are you know 20 something and, and who are you know relating to those to that audience it's just like what's the point I mean you guys kind of like already wrote stuff about that Dyer's Eve, you know, back in the Justice album. So, I mean, just to, to whole, do a whole album about that is kind of weird. And so, that's my opinion on that. So, it's just like, yeah, it, it's... And just all the other things, you know, that kind of turned me off to Metallica. The whole thing about, you know, even Kirk's comments about them being toxic masculinity and all that stuff. So, they're kind of turning into like the Bud Light of metal you know so that's just my opinion okay so um however you want to take it that's on you and i'm sure you know metallica could do no wrong and but you know just that it, it's just a very tiring album you know it, it's you can put your baby to sleep to it you know i think that's why they got the crib on the front cover because you know this music will kind of put you to sleep you know, but that's just my opinion. What's yours? Leave me a comment below. And with that, I'll shut up and see you guys in the next one. Bye.